second segment of the April Fool's Trips and Traps. Andy Sterling, Eric Donovan, and we're going to show you two races from last week to close up the inner track Trips and Traps. And uh, why not, uh, fittingly closing, it would be fittingly to close on a uh, horse like Judge William, who we've profiled uh, several times uh, over the inner track. And now uh, we're going to take a look at Judge William once again, the six horse in this race, the 27th race, number five, a starter allowance. Judge William's a six, but take a look at the four, Rise of the Phoenix. We also want to uh, look at him, too, in this race, getting off a little slowly here. Yeah, I think he's the one ultimately was best in this race, though it's, a, it's an odd race. And I think Rise of the Phoenix has made some trips and traps appearances as well. Now... <coughs> He's left the picture, Rises the Phoenix, but Judge William is being ridden really aggressively to get the front end. No, no knock on doing that, but as it turns out, with the five horse who really Frey the Cap was overmatched in here, went with him and ended up presenting some problems. But I understand the impetus to get him to the inside with, with Judge William and not get caught up like he did the last time we showed him in Trips and Traps. A problem with Judge Williams is he's running Thursday, the day after we're filming this, tomorrow from now's filming. Maybe you won't even seen the show yet, and he's probably in a spot where he can't win. Keep in mind, when you're watching Judge William here, keep in mind how aggressively ridden he was early in the race, and then when we come off the turn, just keep that in mind, because you're going to see him not be aggressively ridden, and the rest of the field is going to kind of loop up, and we see um, some other horses behind him. You see the, uh, the five horse pressing him on the outside there. Uh, that's Freddie the Cat, but right behind him, enjoying a pretty good trip right now, is running with the Lark, and then you get uh, the other group, the trailing group there, including the uh, four Rise of the Phoenix, who's going to get hung up wide going into the turn. Yeah, Rise of the Phoenix, once again, I think this might be the third time in a row that Rise of the Phoenix, who's back in last now, but he won't be there for long, makes a very wide premature move. This time, he was best. The winner of this race, Run With The Lark, might have been fourth best in this race, and he got a great trip in riding here. And even though he's moving up a little premature, he has to because the others are coming, he had the more ground-saving ride. But Judge William here, take a look at him on the inside, the six. Now, he's been ridden along up to this point. On the other hand, I know he ends up getting tight into the stretch, but you wonder if it's if it's because he's not being as aggressively ridden here, because he has room on the inside initially, he certainly does here, it will close up on him, but he's not being given an aggressive ride at this point, he's almost standing up on him. Now Rises the Phoenix has made the lead, Migliori is sitting comfortably on, on Run with the Lark, who's been saving ground on the other ones and got the easiest trip, but Judge William on the rail. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Judge William fooled uh, the jock a little bit here, Sheldon Russell, thinking that maybe he had just uh, run his race already and that he was done, but certainly Judge William's pulling him right back into the race here. He's got nowhere to go uh, in front of him there. Sheldon Russell's got a handful, and he just can't get anywhere through on the rail. You see him throw a couple crosses there late, get into him uh, with his hands late, and he's right back there with the rest of the pack. But, you know, just you have to think that if he stayed aggressive on him like he was in the, going into the first turn, if he was that aggressive coming off the second turn, that he would still have been in front there and might have been able to fend all those horses off. Yeah, this feels like one of those ra races where when it was over, he probably was thinking... You know, it could have could have worked out differently because of course once the horse was clear, because when the winner ended up getting in front of him, he closed off the path on him, which mm -hmm. why shouldn't he? He was clear of him. But it really didn't work out for Judge Williams, who as you said, got the aggressive ride early and then was unaggressive when it really mattered. And Rises the Phoenix made that premature middle move. Now I'm not gonna be surprised to see him go back to actually up to Finger Lakes, but maybe we'll see some of these horses. Is it the King's Point, the closing day feature, I think, or the closing weekend feature here at Aqua, I think the last day. And I'll be interested to see them along with my friend. Uh, Ichabad Crane, who we're not going to show his race, but I think he ran okay, even though he disappointed again this weekend. Oh, no. No more Ichabod Cranes. <laughs> Come on, do yourself a favor. One more race here to do on uh, Trips and Traps, and this is the uh, 29th. Race number nine it was run over a uh, sloppy track. We're taking a look at a first-time starter in here, the one Dakota Joe. Yeah, and he ends up running last, but the first thing he does is he spots the field about two or three lengths coming out of the gate. And it's a first-time starter for trainer Colm O'Brien. Actually took a little money. He was under 15 to 1 in this race. And, and, you know, maybe it was just people named Joe betting him, but he he has a little trouble there. He stayed a little bit there, and he ends up trying to get back in the race, but he's already a good six lengths out of it. But I thought he made a real move here going down the backstretch on the inside. I agree. Considering the uh, wet track, the uh, fact that the uh, first-time starter breaking from an inside poster, you know, you got to give him credit just for, for being involved there. Now here comes the move. He's going to make, you know, a nice enough move here to get uh, into actually fourth place here. So he's going to pass a few horses here, and, uh, you know, understandably in the stretch he's going to tire. But, uh, you know, all in all, I think this is a pretty solid move that he's putting in here uh, down on the inside is going to get into fourth right about now and this is about as close as he's going to get here but uh, still I think he did quite a bit of running here on the sloppy track. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons I like showing this was, and, and I'm not, you know sure, these are not very good horses, but he's probably going to meet a similar group the next time he runs and when you're looking at first time starters and it, maybe it won't work out so well in this race, but as we get on to maiden race, especially at Saratoga and you watch them, 
First time starters, you want to see something out of them. They make some kind of run to show that they have a little ability somewhere. And I think you saw with Dakota Joe that he's got some ability. He didn't just linger back and last, you know, trail the field and make some mild clunk up move at the end and pass two horses. He really made a move during the running of the race. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him show more speed next time out, you know, with the, with the better post maybe not right. getting not being on the rail you see so many horses breaking from the rail on the inner track where the uh, where the you know they kind of put the uh, put the little uh, post up there and just to, the yeah, and it's, yeah it's just a, it's just a weird setup there starting at six furlongs because they kind of start almost on the turn really and uh, it's just hard for horses especially inexperienced horses on the inside to adapt to that uh, little uh, standby rail that they put up there for the six furlongs no question I mean that's why you hear so many trainers say with the first time star I just I, I don't want to draw the rail but you know unfortunately somebody has to get the rail that's the Way it works but in this case I think the horse got a nice little bit of education in that race showed he can run a little bit and he's the kind of horse that's gonna be a big price off his last pace finish the next time he runs and not saying he's gonna win but maybe you sneak him into the exact or trifecta and make some money with some logical horses anyway that does it for this week's trips and traps we once again we appreciate your watching as we always do and once again also here is that email address trips and traps at nyrainc.com keep your thoughts coming we love to hear from you